Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back. Um, big weekend of boxing coming up. We have the Charlo Brothers pay per view, the double header pay per view. Uh, we have the finally have the finals of the um, World Boxing Super Series, the Cruiserweight division, um, and then we have uh, Josh Taylor defending his title against Kung Sung. Which, um, if nothing else, which I don't expect to be ultra competitive, it's it's good to see Josh Taylor. Kong Sung's a, a, a real uh, opponent. Um, I just don't think he has the skills uh, to really be that competitive with Kong Sung. Although, you know, I, I expect the fight to look like Canelo versus uh, James Kirk. If Kong Sung lands anything like Kirkland landed once, it, it's gonna you know it's gonna dent um, Josh Taylor, but. I don't think this is ultra competitive. I think Josh Taylor is just way too skills. Um, but it is good to be back. Um, so I, I want to get into this. Um, this is a fun topic to discuss. Uh, who is the better prospect? Who would win if they fought next? Those are two different questions, but I, I think I have the same answer, um, right? So first, let's start with Enos. Enos fought this weekend.
time comes is that this year, next year, who knows? But it's going to be hard to keep this guy down. Those are really, really, really gifted skills. Um, and that was a spectacular performance against a game opponent where there was almost no flaws. Um, let's get into the other side. He slips his head just off center line, just off center line, just to make you miss. But he's constantly coming about ripping combinations. And where, where Enos uh, re 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 relies on his reflexes and speed, uh, Virgil Ortiz is the more fundamentally sound fighter. Everything he throws is right over the top, right? Right down the middle, on point, accurate at 100 miles an hour. You know, he's the fastball pitcher, right? Like, you know what you're getting, and you still – there's nothing you can do about it. Virgil Ortiz is, and then like fundamentally, his footwork is perfect. Like you can tell he's from that Robert Garcia camp where his fundamentals are perfect. His footwork is perfect. Um, and then offensively, he's so fierce, right? Like if Mikey Garcia had tremendous power and was physically strong as an ox, right? He'd be Virgil Ortiz, right? Because Mikey's fundamentally really good. You, we could talk about his movement. Virgil has it all. Ball. Virgil's movement, right? He sets up his angles. He hits you with two, three, four punch combinations and then gets out of the way so you can't possibly hit him in return. Um, and when he hits you, it is, I mean, everything is a fastball. Everything is hard. It, I, I always compare him to Noah Syndergaard. Even his changeups are hard. There's nothing you can do, right? He is such a physical force at this weight class. Um, look, and I mean this in... in, in the most sincere and, and honest. Both these guys, both Enos and Virgil Ortiz, are going to be welterweight champs. They're both going to have. They're both going to have their day. They're you know, both going to be world champs. And that is by 2022. All right, by September of 2022, both these guys will have welterweight world titles. That's how good they are. Uh, they don't seem to have much trouble making 47. I spoke to Virgil Ortiz last month. He said it's not a problem at all. Enos made the weight fine. Enos has never had a problem making the weight. Um, both these guys are absolutely spectacular. I mean, they're, they're both offensive machines who are good defensively. They go about it differently. Now, I would say Boots is a little bit, bit more spectacular with his reflexes and his, and his punch uh, selection, his ability to switch stances, where Virgil is fundamentally perfect with excellent footwork and all-world power and strength, right? Like, he's a fundamentally sound Shane Mosley, who jabs. Like, th th there is something really, really spectacular. And, look, Boots has a great jab, and Virgil has a great jab. Um, and, and they both use it to set up their power shots perfectly. You know, some guys use their jab to keep you off, keep you away. You know, um, this is the first time I I've seen Enos in his past fight really, really utilize his jab, and he still only did it in spots. Right? I'd like to see him do it more. Virgil is always pumping it out there. Um. So, who's the better prospect? That might be Enos, right? Like, like Enos may have more upside with the athleticism and the ability to switch out of stances. Who wins right now if they fought? Virgil Ortiz beats him. He's too fundamentally sound. He's too he's too seasoned right now. Right, right now if they fought today, he's. First, no disrespect, because I, I
right? It was called the welterweight division, uh, the other glamour division because of all the names that have been in the past 30 years. Uh, it's there, you know, this that that current four horsemen, the Porter, Thurman, uh, Spence, and Crawford, they're leaving this like for the next generation of guys to come up in, in Verge and, and, and boot, Boots. They're leaving it in great hands. We're going to have. I don't know how long these guys can make 47. You know, they say they can make it five more years. We're going to have two great welterweights, and hopefully they get together. Uh, but right now, I, I think, you know, look, Virgil's just too much for him. Virgil's two seasons. He, he's too fundamentally perfect. He can get out of the way, and he can return fire. Now, both guys would have moments. This would be a great fight. It's obviously not going to happen. Um, you know, if Golden Boy is going to work with other promoters, they're going to look for one of the bigger names. They're going to look for the, the – he wants Garcia or Thurman. Um, I think if it, Garcia or the, either one of those names is perfect. Um, so – and, you know, Enos is going to – I can't see Enos going over to fight um, on a Golden Boy card, so I see him staying over fighting PBC guys, fighting on Showtime, things like that. So obviously, I don't think anyone does a Virgil Ortiz Enos fight right now. But if it did, I would say um, Virgil Ortiz powers through it. He wins enough rounds, slows them down. It probably goes the distance. Um, both these guys have not shown a suspension at all. Um, and I think Enos has plenty of moments, wins plenty of rounds. Uh, I just think that Virgil Ortiz's power and physical strength right now is is too hot. It's too finely tuned. I think he slows him down, beats him in a, in a decision. And for, look, Virgil Ortiz, I, I think, is, is is the best young fighter in the sport of boxing. If you said anyone under the age of 24, 25, I, I think this might be the best guy. Um, Daniel Dubois on that list. There's other guys on that list. But um, Benavides. I think Shakur Stevens is still under 25. He is. He's 24. Um, but he, the, Virgil, I think, is the best. He, he's not impossible to hit, but he's a he, he's able, and he's an offensive beast um, who's fundamentally perfect with excellent footwork, who's, who who gets out of the way and covers his track. So again, this is a great fight. You know, I I think the world of both these fighters, but if they fought right now, I want to settle this. And this is not because I I know him personally. Um, he's on the wall right over my shoulder. There he is. All right. Uh, it's not because he's a great guy, uh, and I don't personally and have a, you know, it's he's just a little bit better right now. So I wanted to settle that. I know there's a lot of been debate going on. Uh, and I, look, if you think Enos beats him, make the argument. Leave it in the comments. I'll have into more detail about it. But right now, if they fought today, Virgil Ortiz takes him. I, I would say in a decision, though, it's close. It's close. Both these guys are great, and, and both these guys are two of the top five prospects or so in, in the sport of boxing right now. Under the age of 24, if you said, give me a top five fighters, both these guys are on the list. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, leave your thoughts, comments, and predictions. Let me know who you think is the better fighter and who would win that fight. Um, follow me on all forms of social media, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. You can find me on MCR Podcast with Matt the Hipster Hunter and UK Rob. Uh, we're going to do that about twice a week. And then you can also find my weekly article with Jared Enos. So if you call me a hater, Jared Enos was our fighter of the week um, at fightpost.uk. Uh, you can find my weekly article there. So find me on all forms of social media, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Uh, you can find me at fightpost.uk, my weekly article, and on the podcast, um, Mixed Combat Radio with Matt the Hipster Hunter and UK Rob. Remember to like and subscribe, hit the little hit the little bell icon there uh, from Texas. And remember to share on all forms. Share us, share us, share us. Um, and let everyone know. Um, but from Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.